uh, The Souvenir Part 2, which is the new film by Joanna Hogg, although when Joanna Hogg came on the show to talk about it last week, she did point out that since making it, because obviously everything got held up with what with one thing and another, mm. she's filmed a whole other film, which is a ghost story, which she brilliantly described to you as her first you know, venture into genre, which I'm really, really looking forward to. So, Souvenir Part 2 um, is it picks up after part one. Part one is the story of a very autobiographical story of a young woman who is going to be a filmmaker who becomes involved with a mysterious man, an enigmatic character with whom she falls in love, but she never really knows who he is, how much of what he says is true. Is he working for the foreign office? What is it? And we also find out that he has an addiction that makes him particularly unreliable. And the, that film was a story about a kind of, you know, a head-scrambling love affair. Can this I film... Say, can I just say, that's a better setup than when I asked Joanna Hogg to explain where we were at the start of this film. She could not... She could not deliver those lines that you did. Because she could, as a filmmaker, she couldn't bring herself to reduce something that she'd said over the course of a movie into, oh, a, into a fatuous little sentence. That but was you know, very useful. Thank you. So now we pick up in the aftermath of that relationship. And one of the things that The Souvenir Part 2 is about is the aftermath of a relationship, the absence of that central character, the how one deals with something that was overwhelming and was so much a part of her life and has now gone, but is still a presence. You know, it's that kind of weird, uncanny thing about a presence and an absence, which is why it's so fascinating that Joanna Hogg has gone from this to making a ghost story, because in a way, this is a ghost story. It's a story in which the, the ghostly presence of somebody is still very much a factor. However, what's happening at the same time is that she is approaching a graduation film and she has to make a graduation film, which originally she wanted to make this neorealist piece about, um, you know, about families in the north and telling a story that was true and that was kind of... She was asked before, well, what connection do you have to this? What connection do you have to that story? How is that going to work? But now she decides that actually she doesn't want to do that. What she wants to do is to channel the experience of her relationship into something that is much more free form. This is not well received by her tutors and is looked at lovingly but slightly sniffily by her parents. Sounds fairly typical for an art school. Better come and work on the farm for a bit. But it's exciting. I mean, you're all pulling together and, and helping each other on, on all your own projects, aren't you? So you'll help somebody else with their film and... Mm -hmm. oh, that's exciting. Mm. So the script's done? Mm-hmm. Do we know what the script's about? Can we put... I actually really don't want to talk about it anymore. Don't. We're trying to get it. I know you are. It's just... It's very irritating for me having to explain it a thousand times. We don't mean to be irritating. We're just very excited don't be irritated. And But anyhow, we're looking forward to it. Classic mum and dad parenting. It there. is great, isn't it's it? Absolutely. <laughs> How many parents at that point were nodding, saying, <laughs> "Yep, I, uh, I've, I've been there." We've all been there, and one of the things that the film has is that that real feeling of you're watching things playing out in real time in front of you. I mean, Joanna Hogg talked last week uh, in your interview with her about how what she would do is she described what a scene had to be and there would be certain beats that had to be right, certain phrases that had to be right. Like in the first film, that phrase, the worst, had to be in a particular sentence. But the rest of it is done through a process of allowing the thing to happen organically. And when you watch it on screen, there is a really impressive sense of realism to it. That, of course, is Honor Swinton Byrne and Tilda Swinton playing her mother, Rosalind. And there is one moment, I think you may have referred to this in, in the interview, in which something happens, a, an object in the house gets broken. And it happens so convincingly that I actually wasn't... I mean, I when it happened, I buried my face in my hands because it was like one of those, oh, no, she's just, just dropped the thing that she shouldn't have dropped. And I, would, it was, I could feel the skin trying to crawl off my body because that's how much I believed that what I was watching was actually playing out in the real world. It's a bad moment for ceramicists. <laughs> that's right. Yes. Has the good lady, Professor... Terrible. The good lady Ceramicist here indoors, has she seen it? Very, no, but it would have, it would have been... The, because of that scene, she'd have found it too traumatised. Would she have reacted as well oh. as Tilda Swinton? She says, yes, darling, you should get the dogs, get the dogs, get the dogs. Anyway, in the... It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Yes. It really matters. It really matters, it really matters. And, she, and, and also, there's that pretty phrase, you didn't do it on purpose. 
which is an absolute dagger to the heart. You didn't do it on purpose. That's right. I'm five. That's right. That's right. So there's all that stuff, which is really convincing. There is the mystery of attempting to find out what happened in this relationship, who this person was, trying to make sense of it, that you get the sense that Joanna Hogg herself is working through with, with these films all this time later. But more importantly, what you get is the central character, Julie, finding her own feet as a filmmaker. She's at film school where she's surrounded by other people who are doing the same thing. One of them is played by Richard Ayoade, who's got this fantastic performance as Patrick, who is this kind of prima donna figure who I think we played a clip from it uh, last week in which he's in the editing room and he said he keeps saying, what, do you, what does it make you feel? What does it make you feel? And they don't answer him. And he says, you are forcing me to have a tantrum. Yeah. And it's a very funny performance. And it clearly draws on, on real life uh, figures. But people, I think people forget all too often how much humour there is in Joanne Hogg's films because they can look very austere from the outside. I mean, if you go back to things like Archipelago, I mean, that's like an absolutely brittle surface. Or, you know, Exhibition, which is like two people going mad in a house, although Exhibition is also a kind of ghost story. I mean, she's been working up to ghost stories for quite a long time. But what happens is we see the, this portrait of somebody discovering their own artistic vision. And the way that happens rather brilliantly is that we see a film being made that appears to be the film that we saw in the first film. So it's almost like the second film becomes a weirdly Pirandello-esque hallucinogenic making of about the first film. And also the film that we see getting made exists in at least two different versions because the film that we see getting made and then the film that we see having been made are completely different films. So it becomes this really interesting uh, sort of debate about the artistic process and this really beautiful kind of poignant after the fact love story a love story that exists in the in the aftermath of love and it's also weirdly kind of cleverly deconstructive i mean i've seen it a couple of times now and the second time around it's like oh wow this this is this, this, so there's so many layers here i think that you know she she's compared it to like peeling away the layers of a vegetable but I, th I thought the thing that's really fascinating is that Souvenir Part 1, or Souvenir as it was called, is a standalone film. Souvenir Part 2 is not. Souvenir Part 2 is absolutely the second half, the mirror image, the other side of the first she film. Said, she said in the interview that someone had pointed out to her that it's better to see the second one first before the first one. I don't think that's true. Well. I, th I don't think that's true, and I respectfully disagree. Mm. The brilliantly, the first one is on iPlayer at the moment, so there is no excuse for not watching it. I thought this was, it's, I think it's Joanna Hogg's most accessible work, as indeed I thought part one was. I think the performances are great. I think it's a really, really fascinating description of the birth of the artistic process. And I would advise, if you haven't seen it already, or even if you have, watch The Souvenir on iPlayer and then get yourself down to The Souvenir Part Two because it's really really terrific and a real shame that it hasn't it hasn't been a BAFTA contender because it's it's a remarkable film and a remarkable film by a remarkable filmmaker about that remarkable filmmaker finding her voice.